When I started learning Tekken 7 last year, I felt overwhelmed with the extensive move list and the sheer amount of information out there. Like, there's so many moves. I am so lost. How do I learn this? So now that Tekken 8 is here, I wanted to give back and make the guide I wish I had when I started. Focus on just the essential mechanics and how to formulate a winning game plan so you can start playing right away. So let's get started. Let's start with your attack buttons. You have four attack buttons, one corresponding to each limb. These attacks are also denoted as one, two, three, and four, and correspond to left punch, right punch, left kick, and right kick. Through button combinations and directions, you can access all of your moves with just these four buttons. For example, pressing forward one and two at the same time with Jin will give you a move called his double chamber punch. Button combinations such as Jin's 2-1-4 can be performed by pressing the three buttons in a row at the correct timing. There's a few more complex move types that use your movement as well. A black arrow indicates that you need to hold the arrow direction down. So for example, Jin's forward forward 2 only works if you hold the second forward input down. Holding up will give you jump, and if you press a button at the same time, you'll get a jumping attack. However, if you tap up or down, you'll get a sidestep. There are also moves you can do out of sidestep as well. You can also do a sidewalk by hitting up or down twice and holding the input. Dashing can be performed by pressing forward or backwards twice quickly. Running can be performed by forward dashing from far and holding forward. You can also do a running attack by pressing a button while running. You can also do this up close by triple tapping forward quickly. This is also known as an instant while running attack. These moves are often useful for closing the gap between you and the opponent. If you hold down, you're considered crouching, which means you get access to some additional moves. When you leave crouching by letting go of the down button and pressing attack, this is known as while rising or while standing state. These moves are useful for when you're already crouching, such as blocking a low attack, since standing up first takes too much time. You can also do moves that require an up input out of the state as well, such as a hop kick. You might also see this little star icon. Basically what this means is that you have to return your stick to neutral. For Jin, his command dashes require a neutral input. Now that we know how to execute these moves, let's talk about the moves themselves. There are three main types of attacks, highs, mids, and lows. High attacks are moves that can be ducked under, but can be blocked standing. Mid attacks are moves that hit crouchers, but can be blocked standing. And low attacks are moves that can be block crouching, but hit people stand blocking. Now you might be wondering, why would I ever use a high attack if it can just be ducked? Well, this is where frame data comes into play. Tekken, like almost every other fighting game, runs at 60 frames per second. That means a move that takes 10 frames to come out will take 1 sixth of a second to start up. The faster a move comes out, the better, since a quicker move will beat a slower move if they are pressed at the same time. This is called a counter hit. The other important part of frame data is to know when a move is blocked, if it's your turn or the opponent's turn. This is called frame advantage, and this is often denoted with a number. So for example, your jab is considered to be plus on block. It means if you press a jab and your opponent presses a jab after the jab is blocked, your jab will win. However, most moves on Tekken are minus on block, such as Jim's hop kick, which means that you are guaranteed a punch as long as you do something that is fast enough to hit the hop kick before it recovers. Now, high attacks have a couple advantages when it comes to frame data. One, they are often quicker than mid attacks, and two, they often have better frame advantage on block among other advantages. High attacks are gonna basically have a trade-off for not being able to hit people ducking. Low attacks typically have worse damage, worse startup, and more disadvantages on block and hit than mid attacks. This means unlike games like Street Fighter, you typically want to default to standing block while predicting or reacting to lows and highs, since mid attacks are much scarier to get hit by in this game. There are also other types of attacks in Tekken, such as power crushes. These are attacks that have armor, but they lose to lows. Also, the armor doesn't start up right away, so you can't just constantly bust out. You have to be very tactical with how you place these. There's homing moves. These are moves that are good for tracking players sidestepping. You can kind of tell with this little green swoosh that surrounds a character's limb. There's also unblockable attacks, which cannot be blocked, but often they have very slow startup and they really are not useful in most circumstances. 
There's also throws. Just like throws in any other game, they can't be blocked, but you can actually duck under these. And can also be broken by pressing either one or two for a normal throw. There's also command grabs that need to be broken with a specific button, but typically you can look at the arm that stretches out first and break with the corresponding button. There's also moves that are called low and high crushes. Basically, it's an attack that beats a specific type of move. For example, low crush moves will beat lows by going over them. One example are orbital attacks. These low crush and also launch and are also unpunishable on block, which sounds really cheap, but every move in Tekken has a weakness. In this case, these moves can be blocked on reaction and they also lose really badly to jabs since if you get hit by a jab while you're airborne, it can lead into a full combo. So there's a lot of moves, but one of the key ways to deal with these moves is movement. Now, compared to most 2D games, dashing is very strong since you can cancel the dash at any time in the block, making it very safe. So you can backdash with minimal risk to potentially make something from your opponent miss, which will let you hit them as they recover. Another benefit of being able to cancel your dash at any time is to backdash, crouch block, and then backdash again, allowing you to basically string multiple backdashes together. When you see high level movement in Tekken, this is essentially what they're doing, just really, really fast. But if you start with just two backdashes, you can eventually get there. Side steps are very similar, except instead of outranging attacks, it can be used to avoid linear attacks. The same idea applies if you sidestep around an attack, you can punish them for missing. Just think of movement like professional fighting. It's important to use your movement options to be really mobile to make it harder for the opponent to hit you. However, if you do get hit and put on the ground, it's important to learn how to get up. To simplify things, your options after getting knocked down can be broken into three categories. You can either get up and block by tech rolling or holding back. You can retaliate by using like a wake up kick or a spring kick, or you can remain grounded. So my recommendation is just to mix up all your options to be unpredictable. There's no one good option in this game. And if you are predictable, your opponent can punish you really badly. Staying on the ground is much better than you might think because you can avoid mix up if they hit you and you mostly take great health. Or you can wait for them to whiff and then you can get up safely. Once your health gets below 25%, you enter a state called Rage. You can tell when you start glowing with flames. You do additional damage, and you can access a special move called a Rage Art by pressing R2 or down forward 1 plus 2. Often this is used at the end of combos to do additional damage. However, you can also use the full body armor this move has as a defensive option. Just be careful as the armor doesn't start up right away and it's unsafe on block. So the heat system is the new gameplay mechanic introduced into Tekken 8. Below that character's health bar is a blue bar that's 100% filled at the start of each round. This is the heat gauge and indicates whether you're able to activate the heat state or not. Uh, heat state will make your character do additional block damage in the form of recoverable gray health. It gives you access to new moves and enhances specific moves of your character. For example, Jun has several very powerful moves that deplete her health, but in heat, those same moves heal her instead. There's two main ways to get into heat mode. The easiest is by using heat burst, which is done by inputting 2 plus 3 or R1. A heat burst can be used in various situations, such as mid combo as an extender, or defensively as an armor reversal tool. Even after your opponent blocks this move, it is still your turn. The disadvantage is that the armor doesn't start up right away, so it can get beat if you do it the wrong time. Also, the range isn't the best, so a very common strategy is people will make your heat burst whiff and then punish you for it. The other way to initiate the heat state is by using a heat engager. These are specific sets of moves that each character in the roster has access to. The main benefit of utilizing a heat engager versus a raw burst is that your heat gauge lasts for additional 5 seconds, allowing you more time to secure your offensive pressure. Once in the heat, there's a few different ways to exit it. The first is Heat Smash. It's a powerful move that can be triggered by using the Heat Burst command. This has various properties depending on the character, from Kazuya's unsafe low Heat Smash to Jin's Heat Smash that leads to a mix-up on block. The second is called Heat Dash, which is a straightforward combo extender that is activated by using a Heat Engager while already in Heat State. 
make sure you're using heat every round. A good opponent will surely abuse this, and if you die with heat not activated, you're not maximizing your resources to their fullest potential. So now that you have a basic understanding of the game system, first thing you need to do is to pick a main character. I recommend playing who you like the most, either aesthetically, their fighting style, or if you want an easy character, it doesn't really matter. If you aren't sure, do some of the character trials and try out the moves to see just what kind of feels right to you. Or you can just watch videos of people playing. Then you have two things to learn, your key moves and your combos. Now, there are so many moves in Tekken, some obviously stronger than others, but they're all useful. However, you only need a few to start creating a basic gameplay. Unlike 2D fighters where some of your characters are designed to be full screen zoners while other characters are designed to teleport from full screen to mix you up, game plans in Tekken are a lot more nuanced and therefore more universal due to the variety of tools each character has. I think a good game plan for a beginner is to basically get your opponent to sit still and stop button mashing. There's going to be two outcomes, either they keep mashing in which case your basic game plan will just blow them up or they start to sit still which opens up your slower and more powerful tools to be used. So how do we do this? The first step is to single out the moves we want to use. Let's use Jin as an example. The cornerstone of most characters game plan is the jab. It's your fastest move, you are also plus on block, and if you land the jab you can mix up your options. Jin also has another similar move to this in his 2-1. It's fast, it covers space, and there's a mix-up with his 2-1-4 string that you can finish just in case you think they'll press the button after the 2-1 string. You also need a low move in order to mix up people who just stand block. So for Jin, we'll use his down 2, his down back 4, or his hell sweep depending on how risky you want to be. You also want a mid move in case they're ducking. You have tons of options, but let's pick Jin's 442 since it's a heat engager, which leads to additional pressure. You also have 443, which is a launcher, but on the slowed side, so you only really want to use it once your opponent starts sitting still. Characters also have a down forward one, which is really important because basically you're going to be your fastest mid and it's safe on block. And of course, you also have access to your throws as a mix up tool as well. So what's the easiest way to put this together? Throw out 2-1. Did they get hit? Throws will beat mashing. Or use a quick mid like down 4-1. They like the stand block, make sure you're using your low. So if your 2-1 is blocked, you have a few options. You can do the follow up to 2-1. You can also just back off, backdash, maybe try to make something with or try to block something and wait for your turn on block. Or if they are really patient, you can do 2-1 into something else to steal your turn. And these quick attacks like 2-1 and jab, they start to make space for your bigger, flashier moves and slower attacks. And these quick attacks are good for stopping people from doing their bigger and flashier attacks too. These big flashy attacks often have advantages that make up for being slow. 4-4-3 gives you a full combo on hit while being much better on block than his hop kick. You can also tie these moves together with movement. For example, you try to go in and you use your 2-1, but your opponent throws his own move out first and beats you. You can use your backdash instead to make your opponent's move miss, and then punish with your own move, such as 4-4-2 or back 2-1. Movement is so essential in Tekken, and you'll find many ways such as this to use your movement to make the most out of your moves. It's essential to learn at least one combo with your character and go from there. So for example, we have our 443 launcher with Jin. A basic combo could be something like back three, one, two, one, and then forward, one, two. This basic combo works off many other starters such as Jin's hop kick. The important thing is your main combo starting out should be easy enough that you can consistently hit it in match so you can focus on more important things like actually laying the combo starter in the first place. Now obviously this is a super basic game plan but the goal is to have something that's easy to learn and can get you starting to play matches with structure as soon as possible. And of course, once you start getting some experience, you can add more moves. So for example, you can learn to punish moves more optimally. Characters often have like four to five punishers they have to use depending on how minus a move is. Another thing, it's really important to learn how to punish lows with while standing attacks such as while standing four or learning additional moves to use in neutral. The list goes on. 
My personal favorite is learning more optimal combo routes since they can be just so satisfying to land and match. My recommendation is to focus your learning efforts on beating what is giving you the most trouble. So for example, are people sidestepping all of your moves? Start incorporating a homing attack such as Jin's 4 to beat this. Now, there's no one right way to play Tekken, even at the highest level, so it can be really hard to piece together your game plan at times. So, a few recommendations. Make sure you focus your effort on the key moves highlighted in the Tekken 8 menu. Oftentimes, they're your better moves. Also, watch high-level players that play your character and copy some of the stuff they do. Look for answers for some of the difficulties you're having in the footage that you're watching, and then try to incorporate it into your own game plan. Players with years of Tekken experience often put out guides or can offer advice, so don't be afraid to reach out and don't aim to reinvent the wheel. Also, optimizing your game plan takes a lot of trial and error, so don't be afraid to experiment and iterate over time. The Tekken series really rewards creativity and game plan formation. So in this guide, I tried to cover the essentials to helping you get started to win games online, which means a lot had to be excluded. Korean backdashing, low parries, learning the various types of knockdowns, combo theory, effective move punishment, how to use breakable walls and floors, and so, so much more. My final advice, take Tekken one step at a time. This series has endless depth to it and so much to learn, and you'll never be able to master it in your lifetime. So if, if you want to get good, you need to put in the time, but it's important to make sure you enjoy the process. And try to learn something new from each match, even if it's just something small like how to use a new move or how to punish something that your opponent was doing. Eventually, those small successes will add up, and if you keep at it long enough, you'll be on the top of the Tekken leaderboards too. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to Lynn D, super strong Tekken player that helped me prepare this video. Links below, go show some love. Take care y'all, peace.